get the four bearers ready. Stop, stop moving here, join us. Okay, you okay, can join us. Just, just do, do, just do. Please bring it in there. Oh. 
Let us pray, family and friends. Almighty God, in the stillness of this beautiful sanctuary, we are gathered with broken hearts of the sudden demise of an extraordinary human being that many of us in the churches have known for decades, a unifier of the faith, never once brought disunity, always sought to represent Jesus as a unifier. Lord, as you mourned with Mary and Martha, we pray that 
you are moved with our grief and infirmities. All of Segi's siblings, his dear darling wife and children and grandchildren, we pray in a very mysterious, miraculous, and marvelous way that you will begin to heal the broken heart. Come on, let's pray, church. That you will wipe their tears away, Lord. We dedicate his mortal remains for your honor and glory as a good memorial. Even as they would open this beautifully decorated casket, lies in it is just a tent. His spirit, his soul, his atma is safe in the arms of Jesus. Pray today, Lord, and this church that just a few weeks ago we met with him and worshipped with him, that you'll comfort his dearest family. Every tear will be wiped with the hands of Jesus. Thank you for his life. Thank you, Lord. We just thank you for him, Lord. Have mercy on his family. We pray this in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. Just be seated for a few minutes. We're going to open the casket, and we're going to allow the immediate family just for a few minutes, and then I'm going to tell you how we're going to start viewing. Yeah. 
sorry, we have to cut off. We're going to start the service. This one, the family, please. We'll give you a chance after the service, if you don't mind, please. This is going to be... Yeah, if you can just take your seats, please. We need to start. We'll give you a chance immediately. I'm, I'm sorry to do this, but we need to start the service. Okay, we can all settle down. We're going to start the service. Those in the back, if you can get your seat, take your seats. We're going to close the casket. Please settle down. You want to start? If we can get more chairs from the top, if you can bring it down, please. Yeah. Bring more chairs from the top, please. Okay, let's stand, let's stand, let's all stand. We can ask Pastor Benny to open the funeral service in prayer. Pastor Benny. Father, we thank you this morning, even as we bow in your presence. Thus far, Lord, even as we've entered into the sanctuary, we felt the mighty presence of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, that alone teaches us, Father, we hear, Father, even though we mourn in the flesh, but we've come to celebrate a man that lived a life, a life that he lived, Father, stood firm, strong, even for, for the kingdom of God this morning. So we thank you this morning and we pray, Father, even for the furtherance of this meeting, we pray that the Holy Spirit would bring strength to his wife, to the children and every sibling of this family. We pray for your servant this morning, very especially, Lord, that, Lord, even as he would speak, he would speak your word as dust said the Lord. And we pray, Father, even for the burdens, we pray for the worship. We ask you, Lord, take over. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Good afternoon. Please be seated. We welcome you this afternoon with heavy hearts to the coronation service of the late Segi Chetty, or Segi Palani, as many of you would have known him. Please note that the few house rules, the restrooms are behind you on the left hand side of my left. The family would please ask to respect their wishes to please switching your phones to silent whilst we are celebrating their final hours with their loved one. In your hymn sheets, you will find a leaflet, a blank leaflet. There are pens provided. If I had to ask each one of you to share what Sadie meant to you, I have no doubt that everyone would have a memory to share. You will find that leaflet again in your hymn sheet. It is the family's sincere request that you kindly write your fondest memoirs and thoughts of Segi for them to treasure. And now, 
we have a long program this afternoon, but never ever have I been to a celebration service of a funeral, of a graduation, to be with the Lord than this here today. Segi was a great man of God. He walked in humility and integrity. And may I ask you this afternoon, that as we celebrate him, let us not rush the sentiments of those closest to him, who he, whom he loved and lived for so dearly. And so today, without further ado, we will ask the worship team to come forward and let us praise and worship a living God because today heaven celebrates another amazing saint who has gone before the Lord and he has only said, well done, thy good and faithful servant. You know, most times we go to a funeral on a lighter note and we don't know what to say because half of what we say won't be true. But I can guarantee you today, I cannot find a person that didn't love Segi. And you all here bear testament to that. So let us worship our God and let us praise Him. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. He is a living God. Let us stand. Let's just worship Him.
review. Uh, we're going to give those who came in late an opportunity just to do a viewing while we sing um, the song. Let's try and do it in a orderly fashion, please.
you will be called repairer of broken walls. Even in his death, he is repairing relationships. I called my mom this morning and I said, Mom, Segi has passed away and she was devastated. She was distraught because she loved Segi with all her heart and he loved her. And even in his death, and you will see it later on as the years go by, Segi has left a legacy of reconciliation and building bridges. He loved everyone. And if his nieces and nephews were afforded the opportunity to share their sentiments, they would all say that family meant everything to him. To read his obituary and to share with us his special moments with his uncle Segi is Justin Chetty. in the precious name of Jesus. Um, I'm going to read his obituary first and then I'm going to uh, speak about my uncle. Um, okay, so who may ascend unto the hill of the Lord? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, this beautiful soul, Goddess Sagrin Pilani, appeared on this earth for 62 and a half years. Follow the God-given prescribed pattern for his life on earth. Left his home on the 9th of December 2022 without being a burden to anyone and entered into the glory land. Gonesegrin Pallani, affectionately known as Segi Chessy, was born on 13th June 1960 at King Edward VII Hospital and lived in Mansfield Road with his parents Moses Pallani and Subhama Ruth Chetty. Thereafter, the family moved to Springfield Flats, known as Tim Town. And finally, in 1966, they moved to Bayview, Chatsworth, where Segi attended Truro Primary School and later Depot Road Primary and schooled in Lanesia, Johannesburg for a short while, after which he matriculated at Chatsworth High School. He was, a, he was a respectful and devoted son and a very loving brother to his siblings with, with whom he shared an extremely close bond. The hallmark of his character was his ability to bring family together and he reveled in the company of all his family members. Segi lived a colorful life and his childhood was exciting and full of adventure. He loved sport and excelled in all codes of sport. Um, he played football at club level in Bayview and was passionate about English football and an avid, ardent Liverpool fan. Segi was an affable person who endeared himself to act, uh, act, sorry, and, and, when he went, and went to great lengths connecting people. His effervescence and infectious personality made him the pivot of gatherings and functions. His circle of friends and acquaintances was extremely large and he took pride in nurturing and sustaining all his friendships through personal visits and constant phone calls. Segi, Segi always carried a pack of cards in all his cars and no function was complete without a game of thuddy, which invariably centered around Segi. He was a committed Christian and his life revolved around church and he was actively involved in the youth department at Faith Center in Chats Chatsworth. Segi met the love of his life, Auntie Irene, at a music concert and after their courtship they married on 20 20th of July 1985. He was a devoted husband and their marriage produced three 
absolutely delightful daughters who always pride and joy. His eldest daughter, Justine Jade, married Christopher Lucien Gabriel, and through their union, Zoe, his eldest granddaughter, was born, and later Joshua. Christopher Gabriel was added to their family. His second daughter, Chanel Clementine, married Ashley Phillip, and Eva Grace and Elijah Seth completed this family. His youngest daughter, Nicole Nadine, was extremely, extremely close to her dad, saying he devoted his life to his family and he fiercely guarded them. He was an excellent provider and an entrepreneur of note. I'm still in shock and disbelief and I can't believe that this is, this is real. This is one of my most favorite people in the world. We lost the best. We lost the greatest. We lost the heartbeat of our family. We lost our superstar. But we can rest easy knowing we were blessed to have the best. How do I describe my dear uncle? There's only wonderful ways to describe him. I'm sure you've heard the saying before. Real heroes don't wear capes. My dear and beloved Uncle Segi didn't wear a cape. He didn't need to. He was a hero to many. Loved and adored by everyone that had the privilege to know him. The massive crowd today, here today is, is testament to this. And I'm sure each of you each one of you can attest to this. He was an absolute legend of a man. He touched so many people's lives in so many ways. And I actually can't imagine the scale or extent of the impact he has had. Because he wouldn't have to tell anyone. He didn't need to. He just lived by example. The reason for this is he just loved and cared way too much. He had the most beautiful soul. He was the glue, the peacemaker. He was generous, mild-mannered, fun to be around. There's just too many superlatives to describe him. When he spoke to you, he had this ability to make you feel special. The only other person that displayed these qualities, characteristics, was my granny. He was exactly like our guardian angel, Mao, our amazing Abba. If you knew him, he was young at heart. He had this amazing connection with all his nieces and nephews. All the boy cousins, you know, just loved being around him and because we, we shared many likes and hobbies with him. He was not just our uncle, he was our friend, he was our bra, he was our role model. We shared a love for soccer, our beloved team Liverpool. Uh, a love for Tani, he was, he was the best. A love for cricket and actually any types of sport because he was just good at anything, anything he put his mind to. He was not just our uncle, he was our friend, he was our biggest supporter. In fact, Uncle Segi didn't play by the rules. He made the rules as he went along and I'm sure you all know that. The rules were adapted to suit him and today uh, we are not playing by the rules. We are wearing our Liverpool shirts, our brightest clothes to celebrate you, Uncle Segi. To uphold your memory of who you are. I can't believe we're not going to play another game of Tani, another round of golf with you. Every time I spoke to him, we would, we would plan our next golf game. And the one golf memory that will live with me from forever, it was just him and me, is a game of golf that we played at Durban Country Club. And he, he laughed and joked about this par three hole where Prince Charles scored 13 on that hole. And funnily enough, my uncle parred that hole. And, but most importantly, actually during that game, uh, he and I had a heart to heart. I shared many things with him that I haven't shared with many. He comforted me and he shared personal stuff with me. 
He told me about his family and how proud he was of each and every one of them. I have many stories about my uncle. I was very close to him and, and my auntie as a child. But I want to share just two quick stories of his love and his forgiveness that is personal to me. When he, when he heard about me falling sick the first time around, this was in July 2013, he gathered his kids and drove up to Joburg just to see me for a bit and then drove back down. I don't have any like better words to describe this. I mean, this was like, you know, my heart just actually smiles just thinking about this. One of the most beautiful things I've ever experienced in my life. But, and actually, if you know him, this was such a seeking move. The other story was, you know, when I actually let him down in the worst possible manner and infected him personally. Although a lot of people had a lot of things to say about me in that situation, the one impacted the most was my uncle and my auntie. I was so afraid of how it disappointed him. But he called me over and he didn't judge me or scold me. He forgave me, encouraged me and showed me the meaning of true love. In this spirit and because of my uncle today, if I had ever done anything wrong to any of I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Myself, I will also forgive and forget. Just because of my uncle, the peacemaker. To my dear Auntie Irene, my dear and beautiful cousins, Justine, Chanel, and Nicole, and their spouses, Christo, Ashley, Ryan, and, their, and his beloved grandkids. I can't imagine what you guys are going through right now. You all are and forever will be the love of his life. He loved you with all his heart. You are his legacy. His memory, his life, and his love lives on through each and every one of you. On the surface, Uncle Seiki may have been ordinary but he was far from it. He was extraordinary. I love you, my hero. Thank you for being our hero. I love you and we will try to keep your legacy alive. You are safe in the, in the arms of Jesus. Please give Ma, Tata, your brother Ivan and Daddy Mama a kiss and a hug from all of us. And on behalf of all your nephews, you'll never walk alone. Thank you so much, Justin. That was beautiful and precious and from the heart and I'm sure all the nieces and nephews will bear testament to that. Segi was a man after God's own heart. During the last two days of hearing the terrible news of his passing, we reminisced of Sege's life and he displayed the character and nature of Christ. He was described as a bridge builder, larger than life, a people's person, a man of integrity, relentless in his pursuit of peace and pleasing people however he could. He was all things to all men. Here to celebrate a wonderful friend and closer than a brother, I would like to call Pastor Noel Abrams to share his final memories with his beloved friend, Sadie. Program Director. Irene, Justine, Chanel, Nicole, Christo, and Ashley, and all the grandchildren. I must acknowledge Segi's siblings and other members of the family and friends and members of the clergy. 
I speak on behalf of my family, the Abrahams, this afternoon, and on behalf of our God buddies, Derek, and Israel, and their wives as well. And we thank you very much for affording us this opportunity to say a few words at the coronation of our good friend. And while contemplating yesterday, what I would share with you today, a ton of beautiful and wonderful memories came flooding into my mind. Some serious, some funny, some that put a smile on my face, and some that made a tear come into my eye. As I remembered my brother, my friend, and my golf buddy. Now, I met Seki for the very first time on board the MSC Symphonia. And he was sitting there in the lounge, and guess what he was doing? He was playing tani. And so when we met him, he invited us, of course, to join him in the game. And can you ever refuse Segi? Segi and the family then joined us at church in Faith Center Ministries, where our bond of brotherhood and friendship really blossomed and grew. I led the cell group in Melbourne uh, for a period of time, and Segi played a very pivotal role in that as well. And call me every week, call me every week. And ask me, are we having cell today? Are we having cell this week? Now he later became the events coordinator and men's fellowship leader as well at Faith Center Ministries. And as is expected of Segi, he got everybody else to join in the committee. But of course he was hands-on himself. And one day standing outside church, Segi said to me, he asked me, he said, hey bro, don't you play golf? And me very reluctantly, I said, I used to, but I don't play anymore because I don't have the time. And I can remember those words very clearly. He said, you need to make the time. Make the time. So he said, come join us for a game. And of course, again, I refused. I said, no, I'm too busy. But can you say no to say? Never. If he's made up his mind, he's made up his mind. And so I'm glad I finally accepted the invitation to play golf with him. And from then, that day on, it was us four and no more. And we played golf once, uh, once a week. Once a week, we spent about four to five hours together. And I guarantee you, we'd play every day if we could convince our wives. You see, it's not just because we love the game, but we also had a brotherhood going. It was not just the love of the game. In that four to five hours that we spent on the tea boxes, the open fairways, and the lush greens, we were just four brothers in a huge, wide, open space, loving the game and enjoying the company. We spoke about anything and everything, and some of the things we won't even be able to share with anybody else. And sometimes we agreed, and sometimes we disagreed. But Segi was always right. Segi was always in a rush. And that's one thing that really stood out about him. He was always in a hurry. He would play fast, he would eat his breakfast fast, and he would get onto the next tea box quickly because he had to be somewhere else in a hurry. He had to be somewhere else. We would always say to him, slow down, Segi, slow down, bro. Take it easy. And I guess Speedy Gonzalez had nothing on this brother. He was too quick, too sharp. Segi loved our golf day so very much that even if he was unwell, and even if he felt any pain, he would definitely not tell Irene or the rest of the children because they would say, then today you're not going to play. And because of that, he never told them. He would come to the golf course, he would play his game, although in pain and not feeling well, he'd play. And this Friday, and this uh, Wednesday, he said to me, he said, no, please book a game. We want to play. He said, but don't book on Thursday because I want to go to Johannesburg. The, uh, the kids are not well. I'm going to go to Johannesburg on Thursday, but I will definitely be there on Friday. 100% I will be there on Friday. You can count on me. And that was the first and the only time that Segi never kept his word. But I guess he had a more important appointment and a more important commitment to keep. Segi had a photographic memory. When I could hardly remember my own scores, Segi would remember all four of our scores. 
I was also amazed that he always remembered how we played a particular hole on a particular course, even after months after we returned to play there. One day he told me, Peter Mansberg, he reckoned, now you remember this, this tree here, how you hit that little tree? I said to him, saying, how do you remember that? It's been three months already. But yeah, he remembered. And whenever Segi played a bad shot, he would shout out, Come on, Segi! I will never forget that. And I guess almost all, all this talk of golf and his golf buddies, Segi was sold out to his family. He loved you guys so very much and spoke of you very often. Remember this family that we will always be there for you. If ever and whenever you need us, we will be there for you. And you can count on us. We will never forget Satan. Your memory will live on and linger on. We will miss you on the tees. We will miss you on the fairways. We will miss you on the greens. But we hope to meet you one day in golfer's paradise. Where there is no lakes, no sand bunkers, and definitely no trees. And I hope heaven will have one of the most beautiful golf courses that we'll ever experience. So rest in peace, my friend, my brother, until we meet again. No one else I know who lived a fuller life. My dad crammed a hundred years of living into 62 years. He loved according to his terms and his philosophy was always apologize after the event instead of asking for permission. He would just show up and then ask if you had plans or he'll tell you he's five minutes away and then arrive at your house an hour later. He really went out of his way to make everyone feel at home, even if it wasn't his home. He was the go-to guy for so many people. He had an absolutely incredible way of connecting with people. I remember in 2010, during the Soccer World Cup, we went to watch, as a family, the Brazil and Portugal game at um, the stadium, Moses Mabira. And then we went for supper at Ushaka, Sanko Sari. I'm like Uncle Nine. <laughs> at Sanko's. And we were standing in this long queue at Spur, waiting for a seat. And my dad overheard these three gentlemen behind us talking about where they're going to be sleeping for the night. They had come from across the world, one from Brazil, one from the USA, one from China, and they were there to watch the match, but they had nowhere to stay. And my dad overheard them say they were going to sleep in their car that night. And guess what he did? Yes, he offered, and those people spent that night with us. That was the kind of person my dad is. He really, truly loved everyone. There's no exaggeration in that. But we know that he had a special love for each of us, his children. 
I don't know how he coped with four women in his life, but he made each one of us feel special in the specific way that mattered to us. Whenever I came to Durban, Dad would make time amongst his golf and work and, and everything else he's doing. He would make time to take me wherever I needed to be, which often meant I was late for my appointments, but he was there. The last time I saw my dad was in October. I came for a work trip and dad insisted on driving from Malvin to Amschlager. Even though I knew I had to catch a flight, so I, I tried to discourage him. I tried to convince him that it was completely impractical because I had to catch a flight back home. But he came. He came, met me at my appointment with mom, just so that he could give me a hug and give me presents to bring back home for Chris and the kids. My dad just didn't acknowledge impractical. Justin, it didn't make sense. There was no, there was nothing that was impractical to him. He would just always do whatever made the recipient of his actions know that without a doubt, you were loved and you're special. My dad didn't just build our family or his build business or buildings. He invested in relationships. And what he valued most are the people that are here today. Over the last couple of days, so many people have told me that they just spoke to my dad a few days ago. I'm curious about that cell phone bill. Despite his very busy life, he still made time to call, even if it was just to ask, did you forget me? Or when are we meeting up? Not everyone would know, but amongst all of his special qualities, my dad was very good at packing cars. He was always ready for an adventure. It's like he was playing, tet like he was playing Tetris with the luggage and the humans. He would make sure that no one gets left behind. Who pulls a crowd at a funeral parlor to get you ready for your funeral? My dad's son-in-laws, his brother, and all of his nephews and grandnephews were there today to prepare him for what we saw today. That just doesn't happen. My dad succumbed to a heart attack. And to be honest, I'm so angry at him for not doing his checkups, for not taking care of himself, for not taking his chest cramp seriously, for always underplaying and neglecting himself for others. Had we known that he had a heart condition, there's so much that could have been done. I've been struggling with this over the last couple of days. And then I realized that even in his death, Dad was challenging us. So I ask you today, how is your heart? Not just your physical heart, but your spiritual one. I know my dad was a man after God's own heart. He lived a life directed by God. He lived a life directed by his heart. A heart that followed wholly after him. Even if his execution was completely wrong, his intentions were always right. My dad lived his life with purpose. What he intended to do, he did. He lived a life of impact, a life lived by faith and purpose. So I ask you again today, how is your heart? There is no purpose, no real impact, no legacy, 
no peace, no joy without Jesus. I have no doubt that my dad is with Jesus. I can with 100% conviction say he is in a better place because I know how he lived his life. And now his heart and it's always been in perfect condition. So in the event of my dad's passing, I am convicted to check my heart and I encourage you to do the same. I love you, Dad. The void you leave is enormous. You played such a crucial role in our lives. I have the most beautiful picture of you in Heaven's Garden with Avama. And that's the picture that will stay in my mind. You have given us hearts filled with love. And as long as your memory remains, you remain. Last night, I was reflecting on your life and all the great moments you shared. Like the first day we played pool, the pickups and the drop offs, the day you gave me a blessing. job interview you were always there for me the day I moved to Joburg I wanted to do it alone but you packed the car and you were on your way without me knowing you have always been there present and pouring out your love becoming a granddad being a father to me and so much more you have showed me how to love, how to care, and how important family is, no matter what. I always admired that about you. There are so many great moments and memories between us. Especially the football ones. Our relationship was based on Jesus, a firm foundation in Christ, and and a lot of football. You took the place of my dad to make those calls. Random parts of the night, I didn't be so annoyed, but we just love to troll each other about football. And I know that all your nephews are here with their Liverpool jerseys today, but there's one secret that they don't know about you, is that at heart you were a Barcelona fan. I wrote something just a few words of what you mean to me. Chuan Segi. I know thousands, you reach hundreds of thousands. I'm a father to two, you are a father to many. My friends were your friends. My brothers were your sons. When times were hard, you made it easy. And when I needed a hand, you were there with open arms. You led, I followed. I'm so grateful for all that you have been in my life. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Justin, Crystal. You know, I must just say that Segi didn't have son in laws, he had sons. Uh, they were his sons and daughters. And like everyone said earlier, um, it extended. His love, his unconditional love, was overwhelming. You know, um, Nicole, she had a special bond with her dad. They all did, a unique one. A relationship that only Nicole can describe. And Ryan, who will um, come up with her now, We'd like to just um, give them some time to just share that special relationship with you. Segi was such a brilliant, amazing man for the lives that he touched. 
His family, his immediate family was everything to him. But standing here and looking at this crowd of people, you all meant everything to Segi as well. my dad's hairdresser, his nail technician. I gave him regular facials on demand. I've lost my greatest blessing. My dad has broken my heart into a million pieces. And he's left the biggest hole in my heart. He taught me how to handle so many things in life. But he didn't teach me how to live without him. It's hard for me to think he won't be here to celebrate my next birthday or to walk me down the aisle. My dad's love for people is a testament to how many people are here today. All he ever wanted to do was make people feel special. For birthdays, he would sit for hours writing messages for people. He wouldn't miss that phone call. And I would always think to myself, that's my father. He was mine. He was a man like no other. Mom. Life is going to be very hard for us. I don't know how we're going to do it. He was the best. And God took the best. Thank you, Nicole and Ryan for those beautiful words that only Nicole can describe about Dad. Chanel used this famous quote to describe the life of her dad. When I stand before God at the end of my life, I would hope that I would not have a single bit of talent left and could say I used everything you gave me. That summarizes Segi's life. 
Chanel, if any of the daughters is anything like Sadie, it's Chanel. Every bit of him. And I would love her to come up right now. And Ashley, just to share the beautiful memories that will live on of her dad. When you walk through a storm, don't be afraid of the dark. There's a golden sky. Hold your head up high at the end of the storm. because I spent so much of time with him. But my question to you, who are you reflecting? Are you reflecting your heavenly father? Are you reflecting the traits and characteristics of him? If anything my father taught me, it would be that. In every situation, in every moment, in every hard time. I often told my father I feel like a joke sometimes. Because anything that could go wrong, went wrong with him. Uncle Nine said this last night, he had a hard life. Many of you might not know this, even my own family might not know this, but before my dad left home every morning, he would call me. But he'd send me a message saying morning and if I replied he would call me. 
You tell me, this is what I'm doing today, this is my plan for the day. And I look out the window every morning. I'd watch him load his van with wheelbarrows and spades and levels. And he loved what he did. But he worked so hard. He pushed himself to the limit. And I prayed and I said, God, why, why? And then the scripture came to me. Come to me, all who are weak and heavy laden. And I will give you rest. And if you saw my father after having a heart attack, a major heart attack, the first one, he was peaceful. It was like he was sitting in front of a TV and watching Liverpool play and fall asleep like he normally does in front of a TV. That's how my father was. The perfect peace. Peace that passes all human understanding. But as I close, this is what I want to sing and I wish I told you when you were around.
I could encourage you this afternoon before Pastor Ronnie comes up to share the blessed word of God. Justine asked a question. Chanel asked a question. Sandy left behind the most brilliant legacy, not just to be carried out and executed by his immediate family or extended family, but by everyone here. Fight on. Fight on. Say he fought the good fight. He finished the race. Isaiah 61 says, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from the darkness for the prisoners. That's what Segi's life was. At Christmases, he would take the, the girls when they were younger and he would hand out food to the poor. He never missed a thing in the scripture. Isaiah 61 summarizes his life. And to Segi, we say today, rest in peace. And rest assured that your memory will live on from generation to generation. We bless the word of God and we thank God that it will find an abiding place in your hearts. As Pastor Ronnie comes up to share the word of God. that I can say about my uncle Segi. He was one of the warmest and friendly souls I have ever known. Every sporting activity or family gathering, you could always see Uncle Segi in the middle of action. Be arranging football matches, trips or the obligatory funny games. He taught me with very tough love for a beginner funny player to understand the rules of the game very carefully and watch every move made by your opponents because it's your fault if you didn't understand the rules and didn't challenge. Uncle also always had a, a following of people, always had people gravitating towards him. It was the life of the party, the one that brought everyone together. He would be sorely missed. On behalf of Kabul and myself, our deepest condolences to Ati Irene, Justine and Christo and family, Chanel and Ash and family, and Nicole. Lots of love. I have, over the years and many years, stood to speak at funeral services on behalf of people who we lost in our congregation or other people. I'll tell you something, this is one of the most difficult tasks that I have of standing in front of you, so many of you who've come here to share the word of God. I also had those moments, those 
experience that you've had, many of you have had, in July, in the beginning of July, it was my birthday. My plans was to a quiet lunch with my uh, grandchildren and come back. And uh, uh, supper at my house, just a few people. Because it, it wasn't a milestone thing. But my brother Sergei, what he did is, behind my back, he befriended Anton, and he was always Anton's friend. But he, he arranged a party. He changed the venue from my house to Anton's house because it's much bigger. And without me even knowing, he invited the, the whole family, everyone, you can come. And he said, bring and share. Uh, I wasn't too happy about the bringing and sharing. I was quite happy to, to do that. And then whilst I was seated at the, at the table, having a conversation with people around there, he came to me and says, Anna, I got some people to speak. I said, Zaki, please, that's not me, that is you. And he went on about this thing, I want to help the people, and, and you know, I had to give in. But I said, Zaki, it can't, can't be for too long. So, I have had lots of opportunities where Sergei and I spoke. If often came to me and work, the workforce for his benefit though. But, i tell you something, he was never afraid of telling me what I did was wrong. But, but with respect though. He had a deep sense of respect for people older than him and sometimes younger than him just didn't do as he pleased Sergei is so much a different person to me I'm conscious about time and being scripted and working like that that was the same and I've had to accept this um, um, age difference of six years between me and Sergei so most of our lives we've spoken on many occasions Sergei this morning is or this afternoon is a clear demonstration of God's sovereign nature the sovereignty of God is the same as the Lordship of God for God is sovereign over all creation. And the major components of God's Lordship are His control, His authority, and His covenantal presence. Let me take you to the Old Testament. And whenever Jesus spoke about the Old Testament, He referred to it as the Law and the Prophets. Moses enjoyed a great relationship with God. You know, he went up into the mountain and had a face-to-face -face experience with God. When he came down from that mountain, nobody could look upon him without a, without a veil. So he's a, a great man. And, and, and God had a purpose for Moses. He says, I want you to go into Israel, into Egypt, and take my people out and set them on this journey to the promise that I made to Abraham. But Moses did something wrong. Right at the end. And so God, God took him and God said to him, Moses, do you see those lands ahead of you? Do you see all that, that place? That is not where you're going to go. That must have come as a shock to Moses. That speaks about God. It speaks about God's sovereignty. Leanne mentioned questions. I questioned God on Friday morning, really. 
I go, go up on Friday morning to the to hear my, my uh, Joyce scream and shout and I was wondering what was happening and she wasn't telling me exactly what happened but then she told me about Segi and I said no I don't believe that and I had to phone somebody to confirm that this was Segi so I had questions in my mind about God and Moses may have questioned God but he had to learn something that God is sovereign God is covenantal and God is the ultimate authority as great as you are Moses as great as the others have been I still have control what God wants to have in your life and in my life is the ultimate say the ultimate control Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse number 10 says since then no prophet has risen in Israel like Moses or the Lord knew face to face you're not going to lead the children into the promised land your successor will Joshua and sometimes God or often God has a purpose God has an assignment to take you from one place to the other and you have to accept that this is the end of your assignment you've accomplished your purpose and I, I believe that on Friday morning God said to say mission accomplished come back I have questions about that I didn't accept that but I have to accept that God is sovereign. Just like that, David had a, a great relationship with God. David was able to unite all the tribes, 12 tribes together. And as a matter of fact, David was about the only person who, who got close to God and understood God's plan for the nation, God's salvation for the nation of Israel. Because that was, was God's plan. The nation of Israel is God's people and all around them, the nations around Israel would get saved through that. And David expressed a desire to want to build the house of the Lord. And David wanted to return the Ark of the Covenant back to where God it needed to be. And he said, look, why, why must the Ark of the Covenant rest here? And God called David and said, David, you know this temple that I'm thinking of? I'm, and, and David said, Lord, I'm available to do that he says no you're not going to do it your son is going to do it you've had too much of blood on your hands to be able to do this once again it's a it's a season it's a time and you have to understand how God works he is sovereign but David may have said do you remember that Goliath giant Lord do you remember the experiences I had in the field you know I was praising and worshipping you and God says I understood that your mission has been accomplished your son Solomon will build the temple and just like that Elijah at one stage he was on this Mount Carmel and, and, and you know that story about how the, those that were the prophets of Baal, nothing happened. The, the sacrifice did not burn. But when Moses called upon the Lord, fire came down and consumed that sacrifice. And one day God called Elijah. He said, Elijah, you're a great man. Your season is over. 
the time is over. What I want you to do now is go and appoint your successor. And as Elijah got close to where Elijah was, and he was busy plowing the land, walking himself as one of the, those plowmen. And Elijah, I, I sense in a way, sort of grudgingly gave him his, his mentor. And God transported Elijah into the heavens. Maybe for a season, for a time, Elijah would have thought, God, why are you doing this to me? Remember Mount Carmel? Remember this? You remember that? Yes, God, of course I do. But I am the ultimate authority. And what you need to know, what I need to know this morning or this afternoon, God is sovereign. You can't question God. Let me give you an example in the New Testament. The Apostle Paul was a, a great man, successful in, in many aspects and respects of his life. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 7 says, Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in meekness. Irene, Janelle, Nicole, Justine, and, and the respective husbands. You, you will get peace when you understand God's sovereignty. You get peace when you, when you understand the grace of God. And it's, it's saying to you this morning, my grace is sufficient. God's sovereign will in save his life is a reminder to all of us here as to how God works. Now, did God's sovereignty Compromise his justice? No, it didn't. God will always be God and he will always be the ultimate authority. Did Sergei finish his race? I'm pretty convinced that whatever he was given, he, he accomplished that mission. Accomplished. A model father model brother model son on Sunday we were having lunch just a few of us and then he called Pastor Ivan Pastor took the phone he says where are you guys I'm coming across he came over and just as he was leaving I, I told him I wanted to talk to him about our program today. That will be to help. He says, no problem, I will be there. I was telling this to Marcus. And Marcus says, yes, he's here. Except not in the form that you want. Yeah. Thank you, finish that race. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse number 8 says, And for there is laid up for me, a crown of righteousness which the Lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day and not to me only but unto all that love is appearing this verse tells us that a crown awaits us it's laid up meaning it is kept very safely which has your name on it Psalms 116 verse number 15 says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. To all of us that are grieving here, you, you can't put precious and death in the same sentence. 
It's, it's hard to do that, but this is the word of God. And then, 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 then the other thing that we might struggle with is the death of his saints. Would you ever call yourself a saint? But you are a saint not because of what you did, but because of what Jesus did. And he put this garment of righteousness upon you so that when God looks at you, he sees the saints. Saints is not how good you are. Sainthood doesn't mean that. It means how good God and how gracious God has been to you. And God brings death for us to understand He's in control. Acts chapter 17, verse number 28 says, For in Him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own prophets have said, we are his offspring. Second Corinthians chapter 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. All things become new. And brother said, you live life to the fullest. He is the one that brings people together. He loved family. And would use every and any opportunity to meet with his family. He was not a divisive person. He was a unifier. Do you know the story of Job? And how God bragged about Job? And then how his friends came and told him, listen, it's because you did something wrong. You're, you're going through this. So, so when Joel, Job started to question God, this is what God said. Job chapter 38, verse number 1 says, that the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Just for action, like a man, I will question you, and you make it known to me. And that's the question. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. We don't know the nature of Paul's thought in his flesh, and we don't want to dwell with that. Because the grace is bigger than the thought. My grace is sufficient for you. Book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 to 8 says there's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. So you're looking for answers? Answers in the word of God. Any of life's questions that you ever have, the answers are there already. All, of, all you have to do is look carefully at the word of God. And finally, Jeremiah chapter 8, verse number 22. The prophet says, Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? In a place called Gilead, there were trees that were there. And, and those ancient dwellers, those the people that lived in this area of Gilead would go to, this, to the trees that were planted there and pierce the tree and out of the tree came this balm and the physicians of those days used that balm to heal people of all their sicknesses and, and disease and the prophet Jeremiah says is there no balm in Gilead? And I now want to say for all, all my family, everyone of you there and relatives, if you're feeling pain, then, then I want you to look at Jesus this morning, this afternoon. I want you to know that his side was pierced and out of it came blood and water. And you know this, that by his stripes we are healed. 
And when God is saying to me, listen, you might have questions, I've got answers. And he says, listen to what the prophet Jeremiah says. Is there no balm? In, in, are we, are we, uh, have we run out of stock? Have we run out of resources? Have we finished all our money? Have we finished all the counseling that we can get? You can only question God when you've exhausted all those other avenues that God made possible through His Word. Psalm 140, 147, verse number 14 says, He maketh peace in thy borders and filleth thee with the finest of the wheat. I'm going to ask you to all stand. As I pray over this family and all of you that are here. Father, we come to you through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Thank you for who you have made to us. When we are hurting, when we have these pains, your hand be upon us, Lord. Just apply that ointment, apply the balm of Gilead to all our aching hearts and, and physical and spiritual wounds that we have. Lord, let your peace shine through us. We'll look into your borders and find that there's wheat far more than we need, but from your word. Thank you for your word. Because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. For those of you who have come in late and have not seen, viewed the body, you may do so now. I'm going to ask somebody to open this casket. And, and what you can do is come along on, my, on your left.
that you share a, a meal with them in celebration of the graduation and celebration today. Um, meals will be provided in the hall uh, for those of you who are not coming to the grave.
fall and I fall very much and I miss him and I I'm so happy that he's gonna be with Jesus and I know he's in heaven and he'll never get sick again and he's playing golf and darts with Grandpa Gerard. My business is running around and well I'll he'll always be safe in heaven and you'll never get sick again. Heaven is a wonderful place and we'll go there one day. I love Duncan Shaggy.
Okay, Isaiah, can you please tell me what you loved about Uncle Sergi? Okay. I love when he cared me, I love when he hugged me. I love when he did a good, good hairstyles. I love when he carried me. I love when he played with me. I miss Uncle Sergi. Thank mm-hmm. you.